Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another episode of the Llama Index webinar series. Uh, today, I'm super excited to feature Daniel, uh, who created a very popular recent open source project called Lavog, which started off as you know an AI powered uh, browser copilot. So it's a fully open source project. Uh, he basically created like a, a little Jupyter notebook or a Colab notebook showing you how to turn natural language queries into Selenium code to basically navigate the web. Um, and I'm sure the project has grown a lot since then uh, and it's gotten very popular. And so some of the cool features basically include just showing how you can basically, you know, uh, navigate different web pages directly from a collab. Um, and I see the title of the slide, how to design a large action model. So I'm sure there's like a broader picture that you love to paint. Uh, and so super excited to host both a discussion, some slides, uh, as well as the Q&A afterwards as well. Um, so with that said, uh, passing it over to you. Okay, great. Thanks Jerry a lot for inviting me and also for the support and so on. And yeah, I think uh, you know you sharing our project has been very helpful to uh, you know provide more visibility. I'm really um quite thankful for your help. So yeah, today uh, I want to show you guys how I designed this project. I mean, a little bit like you know how do you leverage LLMs to build you know applications? I think people talk a lot about fine tuning, but the question is it's relatively low level and we don't necessarily see, you know, how to actually do something that is more usable by regular people, I would say. And that's the goal of this um, uh, presentation. So what is LAVAG? I said LAVAG or LAVAG, I don't know, it's, it's French, but um, basically it's uh, the WAVE. Uh, it's an open source project uh, that you can uh, have a look at. Uh, let me just show you if you want, there is a GitHub and so on that you can check. Uh, which is about how can you use AI models to automate interaction with browsers. Um, so uh, I think it's best uh, seeing a demo. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's a QR code work, but I guess you can try or I don't know. I don't know if to, let me just drop the link in the, in the chat a bit easier. Um, da, da, da. Basically, there is a hugging face space for you to try. Uh, let me drop in the chat. So, yeah. So how it works is pretty simple. I hope if it doesn't crash. Um, it, it's a radio demo for now, but we're actually going to do a, a VS Code extension. So that's more developer friendly. But the idea is you provide instructions and it will generate a Selenium code to perform the action. Uh, fingers crossed because uh, it crashes sometimes. What's the scenario? Uh, you can do it yourself uh, with or um, you can actually run that on. We we'll probably collab as well so that you can run that everything inside the collab. Uh, in case you uh want to do it yourself, so, so there is no streaming, so uh, st stuff is happening. But um, how can I say? takes a while. Uh, okay, worst case scenario, I'll just show you. <laughs> and worst case scenario, I'll just show you like uh, the GIF that shows how it works. Yeah, I think I should stop trying to do stuff live. Uh, but basically you write uh, natural language instructions and it generates a Selenium code to perform it. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, sorry, this is, streaming doesn't work on grid on the hanging face basis. That's why it took a while. I mean, it looks like it took a while, but basically, this is like code that is generated by the AI. And I, I'm not going to do all of them. It, it's a bit slow because the model is uh, it's a bit slow, but basically, that's how it works. The natural language instruction generates the code. And as I said, if you want, uh, you can run it yourself on your machine or on, um, on Collab if you want. And it even works with 7B uh, models like Deepseek Coder. So you can even run that locally if you want. So that, that's a bit what we do. And I hope it got you excited because, yeah, basically that's the beginning of, you know, uh, AI browsing the internet and doing stuff for you. Uh, but here, let's talk about, you know, more like uh, the tech parts, uh, you no know, kind of insights I got from building that. And especially like how, how can you use frameworks like Lama index to help you do that. So uh, it might seem dumb, but I think it's interesting to share insights about you know how to decompose it. I mean, 
this is not specific to building, you know, um, LLM based applications. I guess that's something you would have in any case if you were building any kind of application. But I think it's good to still, you know, go back to the basics. And it's very important that you think about what you want the system to do and especially what is input output. Because if you think about it, an LLM is input text, mm -hmm. output text. Now the question is, how do you, you know, formulate your problem in uh, something that is solvable by an LLM? For instance, me, I wanted to like, you know, take actions on the browser. Uh, and so what are the inputs? The inputs are the HTML of the page uh, and the query, and the output is Selenium code. Uh, it might be done, but it's important to define what you want to do and, you know, actually decompose your high-level objective of, okay, I want an AI to navigate the internet to the low-level components of, okay, HTML of the page, you know, uh, query, output, Selenium code. Uh, might seem dumb also, but I think something you should really think about is interface. The interface is very important in this kind of, sorry, I mean, ChatGPT, in my opinion, is successful because they made the interface. They took something that seems dumb, but the streaming to me is very important because there are technical reasons why they are streaming because it's auto regressive, but at the same time, it's a nice UX because stuff does not show everything at the same time and you don't have to wait, you know, the completion to be over to see stuff. But I think this, for instance, the streaming aspect is really important for the interface. And in my case, like I thought about, okay, I, I'm not a great like UX designer. But I thought, okay, I want to be able to see what's going on. I wanted to people to do kind of like the browser uh, URL thing. I want them to ask stuff. I want them to see the current code that is being done, but also the full code. If I do several, you know, uh, interactions and then I, I want to download it. Well, dumb stuff, not the most technical thing, but I think it's still important to think about uh, when you do that kind of stuff. Uh, and then, you know, even though we enter the realm of, you know, uh, free text generation, you still need to think about evaluation. Like, because, you know, if you don't even know if your model sucks or not, uh, it's not a great way to get started. The good thing with what to do is that actions, you can get a really simple one, which is, does the code I generated crash? <laughs> Actually, that was my metric, uh, which is not perfect because it can also not crash, but perform the wrong action. So you might need to do something better, but here I will, you know, explain to you what I did for the hackathon. And for the hackathon, it was good enough to see, okay, did, did my action, I mean, did, did the code crash or not? And also what is the data? And uh, to me, what I did is actually, I uh, just went very quickly and okay, I wanted to see, would it perform well on a few examples, like for instance, here, I took examples on the IRS and the, okay, we'll remove the IRS example because yeah, it's tax season. So I don't want them to know that I'm using, you know, <laughs> LAVAG to automate the uh, IRS filing. But basically, you know, just like I showed, just have a few examples of the behavior you wanted to have and check it works. Might seem dumb, but you know, it's good to have like, a, not do so, your stuff out of, you know, thin air, but actually have actual examples that you want to be good at, at least. You might overfit, but at least you don't underfit because also you could also not achieve what you want to show and then kind of sucks. So I prefer to overfit and then generalize than, you know, uh, not having good metrics or good objectives and realizing, oh, actually, I'm not even able to solve the easy stuff. Uh, and yeah, it, it might seem dumb, but I think it's, it's important to get started uh, fast. Um, and then there is a question of model. Uh, you know, like, um, and especially you need a metric also for your model. So once you check, if you found the metric, for instance, performance being uh, described as, okay, did my code crash? I think in the long term, you might not think about it, but to me, the best metric is cost per token per performance. Because, uh, yeah, if it's super expensive, it doesn't make sense. Uh, the question is also, yeah, how many tokens uh, do you need? But even if you can get very cost per token, what matters is the performance. Because even if I have a very you know fast model because they're using whatever grok, whatever, you know, if it sucks, who cares? Even if you know if even if your LLM inference is really cheap, 
I think it's really important to normalize with, you know, uh, the performance it provides. So to me, as a general rule of thumb, because this is what I want to optimize. Maybe at the beginning, you are willing to spend a little bit money. So, you know, um, you're willing to, uh, you know, not, not care that much about cost. But yeah, I think it's good to have a good metric. Try to compress that into a single one. Issue is performance. Uh, it's it's not linear. So, you know, maybe like accuracy of 95 is sufficient for production. 90 is not. So you have to think about that too. Uh, as I mentioned, we started with the open source ecosystem. So I really thought about, okay, what kind of open source models would be good enough, especially affordable enough for the wider impact. So just little thoughts about what we did. I tried Mistral, Mistral, not Mistral, uh, you know, with an S, uh, didn't work that well. It was a time like a few weeks ago. So Gemma 7B was there. So Gemma 7B alone, kind of sucked. Uh, it was not consistent. Then some guy uh, told me that, yeah, Zephyr was a little bit better. I tried it, uh, works relatively well, but didn't work all the time. And finally, so far, the one I recommend for the ones that want to try locally uh, would be its deep -seek coder. So for information, there is like, if you're interested in code, I don't know if there is something better, but there's Eva Plus that exists as a leaderboard for code. The hugging face, big code thing, I think is a bit like outdated. So here, they took, I think they took uh, like uh, the regular uh, human eval, something like that, but they added more uh, tests to it because sometimes it was not very representative. So basically I just said, okay, uh, Gemma kind of sucks. So based on what they say, who is the best 7B model? And I think DeepSeek is not, yeah, I think they are among the best ones. Uh, yeah, basically that's how I chose it. Um, uh, then I also tried Mixtral, which is slightly bigger. And so far, I think it's the best open source model available on API. Uh, one thing I also wanted not to do is uh, use too big models to manage. So I was going either for small models that are local or models available on API. Because yeah, it starts to be annoying to have to manage uh, you know, a 30B or 70B uh, model. So yeah, uh, that's, our, uh, that's my feedback so far on the project. Then once you choose a model, uh, model performance is, you know, if you think about it, there are only two things you can do. Either you improve the context or you improve the model itself. The easiest things to get started is the prompt itself. Uh, something that I really like and maybe it's not known about is uh, Microsoft does a lot of work on prompt engineering and they did a paper called MedPrompt. Uh, yeah, I gave the full name here. Uh, it's really interesting and it's basically just a bag of tricks uh, to, you know, uh, improve model performance. But here, I think they looked at GPT-4 performance and they looked at some medical uh, Q&A task and they look at, you know, how you can combine those tricks and at the end, almost get 10% accuracy gain just with, um, you know, prompt engineering alone. You most likely know the uh, techniques, start rocket science, uh, like uh, Fuchet helps a lot. Uh, interestingly, you might see that I've, I saw a paper that says that there is like, uh, actually like, you know, a theoretical explanation of why Fuchet learning works and it can be seen as a dual of doing uh, gradient descent. So few shots can help a lot. Chain of thought as well. And you can also do ensemble to, you know, um, make your output more robust. And you can also do like choice or you know, ordering shuffling because as you might know as well, ordering can matter and stuff. So that's things you can do. Uh, in our case, we did few shots and chain of thought to get started. But uh, I would say, yeah, uh, if you want to get started quickly, try prompt engineering because fine tuning is a bit, especially if you do like hackathon and stuff. Yeah, it might be too costly to get started. 
So in the end, what did we do? Well, uh, we took Lama index, uh, added the code splitter to chunk the HTML, uh, a BM25 retriever. I, as I mentioned, I use um, like a prompt template that is slightly modified to have the few shots inside. Uh, I wanted to have something that is fully open source and local. So uh, I used the local embedding. I think it was classical, BGE, and uh, I also used a local model to get started. Um, I mean, I started actually with the funny thing that you might not know is, um, well, uh, I don't know if it's the best, but Egging Face has like some inference, uh, manage inference stuff. So I started with that. So it's like, uh, the good thing is it's 10 bucks a month and then it's unlimited. So at least it, it makes it makes it, it's capped. But actually, like you need to do a lot of you know inference on let's say um, fireworks uh, to actually uh, make it more than uh, ten bucks. But yeah, I uh, I started with that with Mixtral, but uh, then I did the local one because I wanted to see. But yeah, basically, it's not that hard actually to also change you know the LLM, especially if you use Lama index. Uh, it's not that hard to switch uh, to switch the LLM. So that's what we did, and that's how we got something started. Um, you can actually see on our, I think on our docs somewhere, we have an example, for instance, where you run the fully local version. Um, blah, blah, blah. It's loading. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, uh, you can actually reproduce a fully local version, but we also have integration with OpenAI, Hugging Face, Azure OpenAI. And also you will see it's very trivial to add your own LLM with what we do because basically you just need to have an LLM compatible with, you know, uh, Lama index. Uh, so you can stuff, you can I don't know, plug whatever like uh, Claude. I guess you have Claude integration on Lama index, so yeah, you can actually do whatever you want. So yeah, that's a little what we did. If you're interested by the project. Uh, we have a lot of exciting next steps. Uh, some guy, for instance, is uh, working on an integration uh, with Playwright. Today it's Selenium, but there are many automation frameworks that exist. If you're interested by that, very happy to talk about it. We're looking at doing browser extension so that you can manipulate it directly without you know, having to install Selenium. Uh, we're thinking of doing kind of action store where we store the actions that we generate and execute them for people. Fine tuning. I'm yeah. You can read the stuff. Uh, lots of exciting stuff uh, that we have in mind. Um. Yeah. So I think uh, that would be it for me. And uh, very happy to you know uh, answer your questions. Actually, the the first thing is um, I know you should showed like a little snippet of the the video. Um, I was curious if you'd actually go back into the demo and just show like a full like uh like the full GIF or something. Because uh, I actually think I think um, uh, for those that are just discovering this product for the first time, I think it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, uh, you want me to go the real demo or the, the uh, uh, whatever the... you prefer. If the real demo doesn't work, we we can always it, it just works, watch but, the uh, yeah, yeah, it, it took like thirty seconds. Uh, maybe let me try again. Uh, maybe there's caching. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it generates the code, and then I guess like you execute the code. I assume exactly. And, yeah, uh, here I am, I'm a bad person. I auto execute the code, but you should not auto execute the code. <laughs> uh, Are you able to do the second one by any chance? Like the, like on the search bar? The, the, the one on one? your, no, no, no. Uh, just, if you go back to the space, um, okay. the, on the bottom, there's like two, there's like two options. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Also, sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, there's like a that. fill out the search bar. Like if you scroll down really quick. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, those examples. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That one. Yeah. So little issue. Um. Sometimes it. Uh. Yeah. I think the. Yeah. I, for some reason. Well, that's weird. The retriever, kind of, sucked, <laughs> and then therefore it hallucinates. Uh. So, yeah. No worries. Yeah. You know, it's like a live demo. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's weird because the retriever should not be, you know, uh, non-deterministic. So it's weird that it's not, or maybe, uh, I guess, or maybe I didn't fix the seed for the generation of the LLM, but yeah, basically, uh, 
it usually works. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, I can show you the gif. <laughs> but yeah, sure. uh, fixing stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah, no worries. Maybe we could just go to the gif and, and just show. Maybe we could just like yeah. watch the entire thing. I, I yeah. feel like uh, just at least showing, you know, the fact that yeah. you're able to uh, like click on it and push you that type of thing. Uh, yeah. I feel free so, to like narrate as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here I don't show, but you would see below there's a streaming of the code in the you know in the cell uh, part. I uh, did not show it here, but yeah, you can imagine that just below there is the equivalent here of you know generated code, and uh, it works well on your like um, uh, outside of hugging face space because I don't know why streaming does not work that well there, but yeah, uh, interface is relatively simple like. Uh, you write your instruction, you generate the code, you execute that. Uh, funny thing, you can also like, as you can see in the second instruction, you can actually say, use like, you know, environment variable or whatever. You can actually, you know, uh, inject programmatic behavior in your instruction. It's a mix of natural language and coding and it works well. Are you getting the examples from just like a pre-selected set or is this like generated or is this like something you've entered? Uh, the example is something I, I I tried it first and then I just, you know, provided as reference, uh, but you can do more. I mean, honestly, um, it kind of sucks today. I mean, I'm going to push a <laughs> better you know, performance soon. We focus a lot on integration, cleanness of docs and so on. So the code has not changed that much since the hackathon, uh, but um I've done a lot of experiments recently that have not been pushed yet. Um, so you will have to, you know, forgive me if it sucks uh, today. Uh, also, like, this is not, if you put, yeah, large models that are slower, uh, it works better. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, maybe, okay, so so this is this is a cool demo, I think. Um, yeah, and I think the hugging face link is in the in the chat. Uh, along with like the GAL project. So I encourage all of you to basically check it out yourself. Uh, there's also like a collab link as well. Um, the next set of questions I have is about the slides actually. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of want to go back into the prompt engineering slide, which I found pretty interesting because um, you had that, yeah, it was like the med, med prompt paper from, from Microsoft. Um, could you actually explain the last two? So I, I, I think I was roughly following everything to random train of, uh, random few shot plus chain of thought. Um, yeah. Can you explain like what the last two steps are? Oh, well, uh, Ansible is simply just majority vote. Uh, so actually, for us, we cannot do that because it's I mean like it, it's like it's not like a score. It's not like okay A B C D. So I guess for us, uh, actually, I don't know if people are able to aggregate code. Uh, that would be interesting to see. You know what uh, <laughs> what you would like. So in in our case, Ansible does not work. Um, shuffling though. Uh, you can change the order, for instance, of uh, the elements, uh, the examples in your, you know, uh, few shot and so on, and see well, what what is what is ensemble. This is just for the audience. It's yeah. it's just uh, I think majority voting, like, I uh, but here and as I said, in our case, it's because it's code. Uh, I don't know, like how do you aggregate stuff? You know, uh, that's a good question. Um, so and shuffling is more like uh, we know that. LLMs can, you know, uh, can be sensitive to order. So you might also want to, uh, as I said, that you, uh, on something you can also like change the order of stuff. So there are several ways to, you know, um, I, I think what we see a lot you know, uh, is like having multiple small models uh, provide an answer and then combining them. One way is to start, for instance, uh, with um, an interesting paper uh, that I like, which is not that much known. Uh, let me get it. Uh, it's called Chain of Font without prompting. Yeah, a uh, really interesting paper that I like. Uh, and basically, uh, the idea is you. Yeah, that's the one. It's, it's really dumb, but simply you, uh, you look at the, let's say, five first most likely tokens, and you just finish, you know, uh, the five uh, potential answers with that. And um, interestingly, 
the best answer might not be the first one, uh, but ones that are, uh, that are, you know, the first token might not be, how can I say that? Yeah, the first most likely tokens might set you on a path that is not the right one. But if you follow other paths, you you might find the right answer. And uh, I think it's really interesting. And you have like, um, and at the end of the day, if you look at the overall uncertainty, uh, it might be less uncertain, this path. But simply because you started, you know, with uh, with five, you went on the wrong path. Uh, but that means that potentially you might need to do several sampling to find the right answer. And there's also paper that, okay, I don't, I, I have to look at uh, my bibliography, but yeah, basically there's a lot of stuff about, you know, um, doing that kind of majority or slash, you know, uh, sampling to improve performance. Um, yeah, this is like out of the box, like no fine tuning, no prompt engineering, like nothing to do, like not even thinking about a prompt, but simply, I think you should see LM kind of, you know, having different paths and you have to find the right one. And my vision is RLHF fine tuning and so on definitely makes those paths easier to find. But so the pre training creates those paths and then you have to find them. Kind of. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. I, and so actually, and then the next step is you, um, you know, showed the stack that you built with Llama Index. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a few of the questions from the audience were basically um, just asking, like, how how exactly did you, you know, generate Selenium code and what types of abstractions did you use? Um, then relating it to, like, how you did uh, or you talking about few shot prompting right now. What did you, like, what were the steps you took to basically, you know, fetch relevant context and basically get back the uh, the context mm. of put into the prompt. Um. So so so. Uh. Pop pop pop. Um. Maybe let me show you the code. It might be easier. Yeah. So if you think the code is starting to get better, to be honest, I I'm not the cleanest coder in the world, but I. Uh. Yeah. Um. Wait, is did someone draw on the screen? Someone drawing on the screen? <laughs> did you did you see? It? Yeah, let me um whoever's doing that, can you can you stop it? <laughs> um yeah, so we use the da, 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 yeah uh free uh K together free for you know a number of chunks we retrieve. Um we ask the model to uh, output. Uh, the output should be like in a Python markdown, and then we extract the code inside the Python markdown. Uh, I think that I don't remember why I saw that, but I think it helps. Um, boop, boop, boop. Uh, we got some prompt templates. So in the prompt template, yeah, I I think you don't need that many examples. Uh, so basically what I did is I just organized it like HTML query answer and that's it when it works. And I'll show a few of those. Uh, so for a stupid thing, I think XPath is the most powerful thing. So I used to like, I don't know, provide examples uh, with ID, whatever, and it wasn't consistent. So I just said, okay, I really want you to always use XPath. So all my examples use XPath to find the element. And uh, basically I just like ask uh, GPT-4 to provide me examples, like mocks examples and do some stuff. Uh, and that's a prompt template. It's not that smart, but- so This is actually like a static prompt. Um, so the, yeah. this entire thing is like a prompt. So going along with the prompt engineer example you showed in yeah. the slides, like this This is really, this, you're not doing dynamic shoot shot retrieval. This is just like a static, no. like here's a bunch of examples. Could do, but uh, actually it works very well. I'm surprised. That, uh, I mean, actually, uh, is it surprising in the sense that, um, okay, let me find the paper as well. Uh, what's the name of it? Uh, yeah, let me just a second. I'm going to look at my library of papers and find uh, the one that explains it a little bit. Um, but basically, Fine tuning is similar to in context learning, and both are more about uh, how can I say? They're just here to elicit knowledge in the pre-training. 
but you don't need that many examples. You know that the Lima paper showed that you know only a thousand examples of high quality instructions are sufficient to make the model much more steerable. So my point with that is, uh, I don't think you need like a thousand examples in the prompt to make it do what you want. You need a few of them, uh, but not that many, in my opinion. Uh, so that's why, is it needed to have something dynamic and super? I don't know. And actually there are even papers that show that you can put wrong examples in the in-context learning and it still learns to output the right output. So it's, it's more about the form than you know the content. So yeah, I don't know if it's actually necessary, but I guess the best answer is yeah, have a relevant metric and try stuff. I mean, that's that's where we're at. I mean, this is this is data science. Like we, we try stuff. Just have a good benchmark, good data that you can trust and try stuff. And read paper to try to understand the behaviors. But honestly, it's like art and science. I am. Um... What one one question from the chat is how did you uh do you have like a way to evaluate model performance? Uh in our case, uh to be transparent, it's just like okay, uh did it work on the example? Uh, okay. uh yeah, I, I we're looking at doing a much more rigorous benchmark, but today I'm just like, okay, does a demo that I showed you everyone works? <laughs> um if not, okay, I have an issue. Uh but yeah, it, it's a good point. Also, like as you saw, yeah, sometimes it's supposed to be reproducible and I think uh, I, I need to look at uh, suppose I think here uh, the issue is that some APIs for instance here I think it's hugging face API um it's not uh, reproducible so don't they don't make it reproducible so it kind of sucks and so even you know uh, here because I rely on someone else because they don't have the option to be make it reproducible. Well, it, sometimes it fucks my demo, so uh, it kind of sucks, uh, you know. Uh, so that that's a good point for you know having your own model because at least you control <laughs> the yeah, yeah. parameters. And even something sure. stupid, which is like, uh, with the local model, I can, for instance, make the model stop earlier. Because you know, given my prompt, uh, the prompt that I showed you. Uh, um, you know, I know that after that, it's over. I don't care about what he says after the he closes the Python markdown. But models continue. That, you know why it's, it takes 30 seconds? It's not like a, it, it takes 30 seconds. It's like it, it continues saying uh, random stuff like, okay, uh, yes, uh, this solution, you know, blah, blah. It, you know, LLMs talk a lot. And I'm like, I don't care about everything that comes after, you know, this uh, Python uh, markdown cell. But because I don't have the ability to stop at uh, the tokens, you know, to close uh, the, the markdown thing, he, he, he shows me other examples. Like, basically, I mean, if, if you try it yourself, uh, so here I don't show it because I only show the clean code. But if you, if you show it yourself, if you do it yourself, you will see that it says a lot of stuff that is useless. Uh, and I have to wait until it's over. And then I clean the code with, uh, you know, um, with the stuff I showed you, like, you know, the Python X. Python markdown extractor. Uh, but yeah. Um, actually, why, why, why was I talking about that? I forgot. <laughs> um, of course. I, maybe just moving on to the, the um, uh, some, some of the other questions. I guess like um, one, one of the other questions just about like quality is since you're using mixed role, uh, what, what is like the ability, how, how are its abilities to generate code? And what are your thoughts uh, in terms of gaps uh, between like what Mixtral has currently and what you want to see? I think Mixtral is okay. Uh, it It's the first open source model. I got it to work on most examples. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, pretty satisfied with it. I haven't, I want to try other ones like Gork and stuff, but yeah, I don't know if there's an API somewhere. Um, so I think those models, like, you know, even the generalist one are actually pretty good on code. So, um, yeah, also like, I don't know about you, but for instance, I found Lama two, code Lama 2 kind of sucked. Uh, I don't know if it's, I, I haven't done the benchmark. As I said, I should do right. that. And, uh, yeah. I mean, so far I do something that, uh, I should be uh, I shouldn't be doing which is like doing stuff with feelings but I am I'm, I'm working on the on the benchmark but on the few examples you know when I tried and it failed I was like you know too lazy I'm just going to switch it but maybe 
it fell on a specific example, but on average, it would be better. I don't know. Uh, so what you all should be doing, which is something that I'm not doing, which is like <laughs> collect a proper benchmark matrix so on. Uh, actually, I'm working on that, but yeah. Uh, people are not, and I said that, but myself, I haven't done it yet because I've been busy, but yeah. If you have more time, really spend more time on the you know, benchmark than building stuff. I mean, actually, I didn't spend time most of my time recently has been you know on like uh, doing the documentation and stuff it's not that i you know that i don't care about it but Wait, yes the, the, the last like kind of category of questions i kind of want to ask and then before we conclude is like you you briefly touched on this idea of like a ux um mm -hmm. and in terms of like the, the the interface is super important for a good user experience um yeah. in your mind you know obviously one of the cool things about the current interface is that you input some natural language instructions and you have like a little browser window in there where you can see the actions that it's taking so i think that's that's kind of fun um what are some extensions on this browser interface that you think we could um that that you know you know you think could be next steps or or just like interesting more agentic mm -hmm. ways of like uh showing things or how humans can interact with this application uh, beyond yeah. what we have right now so the next step to me uh, is um, we're going to release like a VS Code extension uh, where the generated code will be in a Python cell. Uh, and that is that this way you'll be able to use all the tools you have in VS Code, like autocomplete, copilot, whatever, etc. So um, I, I think, I mean, my idea is that it would look like, I don't know, let's imagine. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So it would be that it would look like something like uh, something like this, where you would have like your browser open in one, and then you would have like almost what we have today, which is like one one uh, input for the instruction and the code below. So you could imagine like you know something like uh, yeah uh, blah blah here, and then uh, below the you the output would be streamed in this Python cell, but then you will be able to use like, you know, all the VS code capabilities that you have. And you can execute that, you can modify that, and then you can, if you're happy, it executed, and then it impacts, you know, the browser on the left, and then you can like uh, iterate based on that. So that's what we are working on. Stupid thing, um, you cannot change the output of a current notebook. So, because I want to fill the content of this notebook of this cell from this cell doesn't work. So currently my CTO is looking at how Jupyter works, you know, on a low level. And <laughs> uh, we're doing a fork of uh, Jupyter uh, base code extension to make this feature possible. Uh, it will be pretty cool, I think, because this way I I'm okay with the current interface, but I don't think it's great for developers. Like you know, I don't want to have another you know tab open. Uh, <laughs> I prefer you know that this interaction happens in my VS code. So that's what we're working on. And I think my hypothesis is we are, I don't believe in the agents yet. Like if the stuff crashes, you're done. Like what, you you start from scratch. I believe much more in Copilot today. And to me, the best product, the best AI product out there is GitHub Copilot. It's not perfect, but it does work. It does make you, you know, some stupid stuff like when you write I don't know, dictionaries, it's so annoying to write every fucking, you know, and just the fact that you understand to finish the dictionary for me is, is great. Even though I don't, sometimes it suggests stupid stuff, but I just don't accept it, that's it. Uh, and I think, you know, having to switch to another browser, whatever, you know, even if it's not integrated in my workspace, I think it will not be successful. That's why I'm thinking about, okay, where are my users? Okay, I target developers. I target people who do that kind of stuff. Okay, what do they use? Uh, I mean, that's what you should, that's how you should think about it. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of agents yet because yeah, if they crash, what do you do? You need to be able to, you know, uh, finish it yourself. Great. Yeah, thanks for thanks for the answers. I mean, I think obviously this is one of those things that's like pretty simple, but works pretty well. And of course, one of the biggest challenges with anything that's a long running agent is you need to ensure reliability. Uh, yeah. and, and just um, making sure that it's able to execute stuff well over multi hops. Um, great. I, I think I think that basically concludes most of the questions uh, for for the webinar. 
Um, and so, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, this video will go out on, on YouTube and thanks um, Daniel for building a great project. And I think we, we link the links in the chat if you want to go check it out. There's a Hugging Face space as well as a GitHub repo yeah. link. Um, so definitely check it out. It seems like there's some cool improvements coming soon, browser extensions, all yeah. that stuff. And so keep us posted on updates. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, thanks a lot for having me. And yeah, if you are interested in anyone like contributing or doing some stuff, very happy to uh, help you and you know uh help us because i guess that's useful i mean my next demo would be like i open uh like open ai's website and i ask lavag to get the receipts out of there <laughs> and, and that kind of stuff. i think it has a lot of interesting stuff you can do and then people can put you know on the hub the actions they create and so for some maybe someone could be like okay here is an action to get uh, a ticket on united whatever you know book some stuff and i think it'll be really interesting to see what goes with the community so if you're interested uh, yeah be happy Sounds to great. work on that looking forward to it all right have a good day everyone bye yes bye